Hello and welcome. I'm Mallory Gershenfeld, a senior product manager for S3 on Outposts. Today, I will be showing how to use S3 on Outposts for replication between your AWS Outpost racks and how this helps you meet your data residency and compliance requirements. We'll review everything you need to get started using replication on Outposts. We'll cover the feature itself, networking and permission prerequisites, how to create a replication rule, and how you can monitor and troubleshoot in Amazon CloudWatch and Amazon EventBridge. S3 replication on Outposts is a new feature of Amazon S3 on Outposts. This extends S3's fully managed approach to replication to Outpost buckets, helping customers meet their data residency and data redundancy requirements. With local replication on Outposts, you can create and configure replication rules to automatically replicate your S3 objects to another Outpost or to another bucket on the same Outpost. During replication, S3 on Outpost objects are always sent over the customer's local gateway, LGW, and objects do not travel back to the AWS region. Replication on Outposts provides an easy and flexible way to automatically replicate data within a specific data perimeter to address data redundancy and compliance requirements. With replication on Outposts, you can replicate objects to a single Outpost destination or to multiple destination buckets. You can select to replicate all the items in your bucket, or you can filter to select objects based on prefix, object tags, or a combination of both. S3 replication on Outposts also provides detailed metrics and notifications to monitor the status of your replication. You can monitor progress by tracking bytes pending, operations pending, and replication latency between your source and destination Outpost buckets using CloudWatch. You can also set up Amazon EventBridge rules to receive replication failures to quickly diagnose and correct configuration issues. We designed replication on Outpost to provide a similar and familiar experience to replication region. We provide the flexibility to replicate to the same or different Outpost and the functionality to support multiple destination rules as well as across accounts. We provide progress tracking in CloudWatch and like all operations on Outposts for S3, your replication rules will be access point based. Amazon S3 access points on Outposts simplify data access for any AWS service or customer application that stores data in S3. Access points are named network endpoints that are attached to buckets that you can use to perform S3 on Outpost object operations. Each access point has distinct permissions and network controls that S3 on Outpost applies for any request that is made through that access point. Support for S3 replications on Outpost is available at no additional cost and is available in all AWS regions where AWS Outpost racks are available. Note that there's no egress charge for data sent between AWS Outpost racks since that traffic is occurring across the customer's network called the Local Gateway, LGW. The services we'll use today include AWS Outpost Rack, S3 on Outposts, Amazon CloudWatch, and Amazon EventBridge. Now we'll cover the two prerequisite steps that customers take before creating a replication rule. The first is enabling S3 on Outposts with an IAM Trust policy to be able to replicate the objects on your behalf. Second, and from a networking perspective, you'll create a new local gateway route entry table. And this will connect your source and destination endpoints so that your traffic egresses from one outpost over the other across your local gateway. In a moment, we'll see how we create an IAM policy with the STS assume role for the service principal outposts. Additionally, we can limit the access policy to only include the source bucket and access point as well as the destination bucket and destination access point. After we've completed those two steps, creating a replication role will seem familiar compared to replication in region. Within the management tab of your bucket, you'll be able to create a replication rule. You'll select your source bucket access point and your destination bucket access point. Similar to in region, versioning must be enabled on both the source and the destination. Optionally, you'll have three selections at the bottom where you can elect to create replication metrics and sending to the CloudWatch account of the source bucket. 
You can create a delete marker replication as well as electing to have replica modification sync for your metadata. This introduced three new S3 control APIs similar to the other control APIs for S3 on outposts. Now let's talk about how you'll be able to monitor your replication traffic as it's occurring. Today, S3 on Outpost emits four types of metrics for every direct S3 on Outpost usage. We emit Outpost total bytes, which will tell you the size of your S3 cluster on the Outpost, how many bytes remaining free of that S3 capacity, and then on a bucket level, it'll tell you the bytes used per bucket as well as the account. Additionally, here in green, if you selected to replicate metrics on your configuration, you will see bytes pending, operations pending, and replication latency. Now, additionally, for the first time, S3 on Outpost has its own namespace within EventBridge, formerly CloudWatch Events. When customers enable metrics and events, the S3 on Outpost replication failure events go to the default event bus. Here in Amazon EventBridge, you're able to create a new rule and event and filter out for only S3 replication failures in the event pattern. EventBridge rules enable customers to send failure events to a target destination with support for over 25 location services across AWS today. A few of the most popular services used for failure replications include SNS, SQS, Lambda, and Glue. Targets enable customers to build in awareness and take corrective action for S3 on Outpost replication configuration failures. Additionally, EventBridge automatically for each replication rule creates monitoring already emitted as CloudWatch metrics, including invocations, triggered rules, failed invocate, and failed invocations underneath the monitoring tab of your rule. Customers can select to view these CloudWatch metrics in the EventBridge console or in the CloudWatch console per rule. Also located on our docs pages, you'll see the Amazon EventBridge failure types, and descriptions for all S3 replication on outpost failures. One of the most common failure modes is enabling versioning and then disabling versioning after the replication rule is already created. And now we'll go to the AWS Management Console to see this in action. In today's demo, we have two outposts. We have a source outpost ending in A4 and our destination outpost ending in 6A. These are located in different sites, and they can also be home to different regions. S3 on Outpost Replication supports multi-destination support, cross-account, and cross-outpost. First, we'll make sure that all our prerequisite steps have been completed. On our source and destination outpost, today we're using COIP, customer-owned IP addresses. We can go to our local gateway route tables, and click in to our source local gateway route table ID. Here under COIP pools, we see that this outpost has a site range ending in 10/24. In order to set up our networking, we're also going to need to know the site range of our destination outpost. So we'll go back to the route table, go into our destination outpost ending in 6A, COIP pools and see that this is ending in 2024. Next, we'll go ahead and set up our trust policy to enable S3 on Outpost service principle to replicate objects on your behalf. We'll navigate to Identity and Access Manager, IAM, and we'll go to Roles. We want to make sure that the role we create for replication contains two components. The first is a trust relationship. Here we see we are assuming role for the service principal S3 on Outpost namespace. Second, we also have a policy applied that enables access on both the source access point and bucket and the destination access point and destination bucket. Next, we can navigate to Amazon S3 and select Outpost Buckets. Here we have two outpost buckets set up. On our source outpost ending in A4, we have demo bucket 01, and on our destination outpost, we have bucket 02. 
Clicking into our source bucket, we want to make sure that our networking is set up with our CIDR ranges endpoint routing. Here we'll go to access points. We'll go into our source access point 01 and see that it has an endpoint ID of UF. This particular subnet ending in FC and we'll click into this subnet. We'll go to the route table and we'll see that we have the matching entry of the source ending in 10 to our destination endpoint site range. And we see our target is the local gateway. This ensures that our networking is set up so that the replication traffic will flow over your local gateway directly between your two outposts. This rule must also be set up on the destination. Now that we've confirmed we have networking and permissions set up, we're ready to create our replication rule. So we'll go back to our outpost buckets and go into our source outpost bucket. We'll go to the management tab and we see we have no repli replication rules applied today. So we'll create a replication rule. We'll apply this rule to all objects in the bucket. Our source access point is the O1 access point, and our destination access point is on our outpost ending in O2. We'll select the IM role that we created. Here, we'll select to enable replication metrics, delete marker replications, and replica modification sync. By enabling replication metrics, we'll have object level replication failures in EventBridge. So we'll set up our EventBridge pattern. By default, all events go to your Amazon EventBridge default bus. What you can do is create a rule to filter out selected items and send them to your target destination. In this case, we'll create a new rule and we want this rule to run with an event pattern. Here we have the source as the service principal S3 outpost namespace and the detail type is the only type of event bridge emitted from S3 outpost today. Targets represent locations where you want to send the event pattern. In this case, we'll choose CloudWatch log group. Now that we've created our rule, we'll go back to our replication. And we'll go ahead and create our rule. Here we see our rule has our source bucket 01 and our destination 02. And we have all additional replication options turned on. Now we're ready to investigate at an object level and understand our replication status. You can use any IDE of your choice, and for today's demo, we'll be using a Jupyter Lab notebook. First, we'll import our needed packages, substantiate our two Bodo3 clients, both S3 and S3 control, and set all of our variables for our source and destination buckets. We also have a sample file, samplefile.txt, on the left that we'll be using to show object level replication. we'll see the buckets we have in our source outpost. We see the S3 replication demo 01 bucket we set the rule on. We'll confirm our rule is present and enabled. We see our replication demo is status enabled. Next, we'll see what we have in the bucket. We see this particular bucket is empty. So we'll upload our sample file to be replicated. Now we'll head that sample object to understand its replication status. We see the replication status is now complete. Next, we'll head that object in the destination bucket to also see its replication status. We see in the destination bucket, the status is replica. We also see that the E tag and the last modified date are the same between two objects. 
indicating its true replication status. Next, we'll illustrate how you can monitor and manage replication failures. As covered earlier, we know that the source and destination bucket must have versioning turned on. We see right now that the destination bucket has status enabled. In order to represent a failure scenario, we'll go ahead and turn off the destination versioning. Now we'll upload a new object to the source bucket. We'll now do a head object to see its replication status. In this case, we see the replication status is failed. To find the full failure detail, we'll go over to our event bridge target. Here we'll go to our target and click into the CloudWatch log group that we created. We'll click into our log stream. and we see that the failure reason is the destination bucket is unversioned. We can also use the Amazon S3 and Outpost doc page to get a full description. Here we see the DST, destination bucket unversioned, has been set up. To correct this action, we must re-enable versioning on the destination bucket. Before Outposts, you've been able to replicate your objects using S3 replication and region. However, we've heard the customer need to do this locally at the edge for compliance reasons and data residency reasons. Now, architecting with S3 on Outposts and replication, you can create and deploy highly available applications to support such use cases. Thanks for joining.